Ooh. Woo! <laughs> Cut that out. Um, video games, Bernie. Yeah, video games. I think to me, before we like discuss on video games, to me this year has not been the year of the video game at all. No. Just thinking about all the issues that have stemmed from video games, especially on EA's part. Yeah. With the microtransactions, <laughs> with legislation getting involved now, uh, transactions, loot boxes. It just this year to me was just a very disappointing year, especially with games like Two K, Battlefront, uh, Overwatch to an extent, just in terms of the uh, loot box system. But just everything, dude. It's just I was very disappointed because of you know. Just thinking about to the days that we used to play, even just a couple of years ago, it was still a good year mm-hmm. of video games. But this year was a very down year for video games. I would say movies, in terms of what media took over for me, mm-hmm. was that's what took over. Movies took over video games for the first time in a while for me. Yeah. And I just want to see video games come back to where they were at at one point. Even last year. I mean, this I just feel like there wasn't a lot of games that came out this year. You know, I, I just recently... I was buying some new games and I went to GameStop. I actually went to two different GameStops to look for just like what they had. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at all the new games on like the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and it just like feels like nothing has really come out. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like not very many big games or like nothing I really even want to play, you know? Right. Um, which is kind of, it's definitely a bummer. And like this year has been the year of I almost want to say like the year of the streamer, you know, mm-hmm. like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and you know Fortnite and Fortnite and stuff like that. Those are all popular because they're so like they're so watched on Twitch, you know. There's yeah. a reason they're so popular. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds never would have caught on like it did if it wasn't for streaming. There's no way. Um, an alpha game that's honestly not very well put together, and it's just. A, a unique concept that caught on because so many people got their eyes on it because of people like Dr. Disrespect and people like Summit 1G and just people like that made that game popular. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, big asterisks for us. Neither of us own the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. So for most people, two of their biggest or best games of the year, we didn't even play at all. Yeah, I mean, maybe, like, demo-wise, but not, like full game experience yeah like, neither of us played Zelda or Super Mario Odyssey yeah. so take it with a, our opinions just understand that we didn't play those there's probably a good chance they are they do look incredible I think both of us have played demos for both of them they're great games we just haven't had a chance to play them yeah so I want to start with worst games of the year mm-hmm. this time um, start it up start it up should we give nominations real quick? Let's give then? nominations, of course. I think Destiny 2 was definitely up there. Wow, whoa. That's hard. And it's only based on the fact that they have, they're have they very shady with their practices. With it's the XP bu- gimmick. Bungie, yeah. XP. Uh, just different countless ways that the game forces you to spend money. Mm-hmm. It's just a ridiculous amount to me. Another game that I would put in the same boat is w- uh, WWE. Uh, no, NBA 2K18, again, another game where it's solely based on microtransactions where you can spend, you know, 2,700 hours and you still won't be the best player. Yeah. Battlefront 2, I mean. Battlefront 2. Certainly has to be on list for the worst games of the year. Yeah. I can't tell you the time I was more excited. Like, I played the demo of that game, or the beta, I should say. I played a little bit of it at a friend's house. And I was just so ready for that game because what I got was so good just like in a bite sized increment there's no better game than Battlefront 2 right. just from pure gameplay standpoint but anything more than just the bite size like your first go with the game it's awful like there's nothing to it and then the the even bigger travesty of the game is the fact that the, the whole microtransactions thing you know mm-hmm Because they put a game that really, when it comes down to it, doesn't have an awful lot of content. And then they they just bog it down with so many microtransactions that the game is hardly even a game anymore. Right. It's, it's, It's hard for me not to want to pick Battlefront 2, but I'm going to go against that and not pick it. Um, There's some more nominations I want to give. 
and I'm struggling to find them at the moment. So mm-hmm. hold on one second. Um, another another one, easily to throw onto the list is uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, I was. I saw that released this year. Man, I was so excited for that game. Paid for the deluxe edition. Ooh. I love the trilogy. The original trilogy is so good. That game is one of the worst pieces of trash I've ever played from beginning to end. Um, you know what the common theme of that is, though? What? EA. EA. EA definitely ruined a game that had, like, many fans adored that series. I and, mean, they, and, and they just ruined it. It's one of my favorite series of all time. And then, like, that game is just, it's it's such a bare bones, carbon shit copy of the originals that it's like, what's the point of this? Like, why did you think this was going to be good? That's the real question. Like, mm-hmm. who was making that and thinking, oh, this is going to be a good game? Which doesn't make any sense. Um, that That's going to win for me, Mass Effect, because I was so tremendously upset with how bad that game was. Yeah. I was just like, I couldn't stand it. Mm-hmm. The facial animations looked like wax figures, you know, like that you put on top of a cake. Not even like the wax figures in like the wax museum. They look like the little wax people you put on top of a wedding cake. That's wow. how bad they look. Looked like trash. All right. The story is written by like a nine year old. It's so boring. It's awful. Terrible game. Easily winner of my award. Tell us how you really feel. But yeah, I mean, I didn't really play that Spin game. I didn't really play that game as much. I played when it was a little bit cheaper. So, and I mean, I just by looking at it and just playing like a couple minutes of it, I was like, mm-hmm. wow, this game is definitely not like the old ones. And just going to my worst game of the year, just to cut it short, I think it has to be for me. W, or, I keep doing that. NBA Two K Eighteen. The 2K series was a great series back in its heyday from 2K11, or actually 2K9, with Kevin Garnett on the cover, mm-hmm. to when they went with the Michael Jordan on the cover of 2K11, with Kobe Bryant on 2K10, I believe. I just can't believe where it's gone now, mm-hmm. where they've sold out to the corporations like Ruffles Chips, Mountain Dew, and just broken game mechanics that take months to fix yeah the thing too that's so disappointing about nba um 2k is like that game was really like second fiddle to nba live for so long and then the fans like demanded that it be better like and it was like 2k became the better game and then the fans stuck with it and it stayed that way for a few years and now it's just like such a sellout of a series you know yeah awful it just gets me upset because it has the potential to be one of the best games in the world but they changed a lot of the mechanics it's more based on microtransactions road to 99 basically is filled with toll booths where you have to pay in order to get better as a player i just get frustrated with that because it's something that i don't want to see happen to a basketball game especially because it's what it's kind of like the effect right now with madden where it's like it's the only good version of the game and that's being made right now 2k's really done well with the game itself by making it a very good experience but they put it behind so many paywalls they put it in just ridiculous spots that i just get so frustrated with the way that the game is basically centered around advertisements Mm -hmm. and microtransactions the advertisements gets me pissed off the most because the storyline of the game mode is just god-awful uh accidentally answer it? No, I just wanted to check. Oh, <laughs> check and see what that one was. Yeah, talk shit and be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. But yeah, before the phone interrupted, just uh, talking about, you know, what happened with it and the sellout of the game, not having good storyline, uh, you know, based on the fact that they just got lazy with it. They were like, okay, our advertisers will pay for it. And I still, to this day, will not get the image out of my head of the live stream that they had <laughs> where every 
box corner of that Twitch stream oh, was filled with goddamn Ruffles chips. Ruffles everywhere. So like Ruffles overload. They, I don't even like Ruffles. Yeah. Ruffles are the worst. Yeah, that was uh, that was the absolute embarrassment. <laughs> and like your your sponsored games are like the you know the advertising games is like for certain challenges were based on Ruffles Mountain Dew, mm-hmm. and they didn't even work at times because the game developers didn't put in enough time and effort to check for bugs, check for issues, and that's what I hate about this new generation a lot of is that they don't fix the bugs or like they don't wait until the game is perfect to get rid of the bugs. Mm-hmm. You have to buy the game and then wait and get like a 30 gigabyte update. And then pay for $15 worth of microtransactions in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, even more in 2K because if you want a good player, you have to spend at least yeah. like 30 to 40 bucks, which shouldn't be po- it shouldn't be a thing. I, I'm just so frustrated with the game. You know, the way they earn VC is just a ridiculously slow pace. Yeah. I, I just don't know why these companies are getting away with it, and I'm glad that legislation is kind of taking over to force them to change their policies because it's just it's a crime. Yeah. Um, another honorable mention as far as worst games of the year. Oh, man. For Honor. I don't know if you played that game at yeah. all. I actually want to say that's EA as well. Now i got to look it up. Um, For Honor, I played that game not right at launch, but I played maybe a couple months after it came out. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an Ubisoft game. Yeah, it's Ubisoft, whatever you want to call Overhyped. it. Overhyped, um, as usual. It's just such a cool concept, and then the game is also hidden behind a bunch of microtransactions and a season pass. And then honestly, the game is just boring as shit. It's a bad game. Bad, bad game. Do we have a ghost in the house? I don't know. It was weird, both of us. Um, yeah, that game's terrible. Um, also, just one one last one, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, which at first I was really excited. I started playing it. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. That game's boring. That's incredibly yeah. boring. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on to happy video game talks because there's not a ton this year. No. But there is, I've honestly spent this year playing old games, mostly. Um, but there are some good ones in in the mix, too. You got any uh, picks that instantly come to the top of your head? Um, well, I think we talked about it a little bit before when you were talking about Twitch streamers, but Fortnite is a good game. Okay. Uh, you know, get, I think the reason why for me it is because, you know, a lot of my friends play it, so we've had a great time playing it. Um, also going with, I think the Nintendo games, this was like the 2017 was, I think, the year of Nintendo. Mm -hmm. After being laughed and ridiculed from the Wii U to, you know, their strong policies on third party games. It's just glad to see that they can do well. Yeah. But I need to see this like continuously because I feel like they're going to get complacent and not want to uh, kind of continue this strong push. They're going to kind of be settle on their laurels and then just not yeah want to get better at anything. Um, for me, just some nominations I want to make. Some things that I aren't going to win, but I, I do want to mention because they're very good. Yakuza 0 I've talked about on the yeah. channel, um, as well as Yakuza Kiwami. Both of those games are really good. Mind you, Kiwami is a remake, but it is still awesome. Those games are really, really good. If you haven't picked them up, check them out. Uh, Neo which is kind of a Dark Souls style of game. came out on the PlayStation 4 as an exclusive. That game is incredible, too. It's like a samurai Dark Souls mm-hmm. game. So fun. Really well-made game. Cuphead is not going to win for me, but it is a great game. Yeah. I think it is winning a lot of Game of the Year awards yeah. for a lot of people. But not. it's not going to be my pick just for the mere fact that I think... Um, and I, I beat it. It's not the hardest game I've ever played, but I do think, to a certain extent, what is going on in the house? <laughs> There's, like, noises everywhere. Um, no. I think the entry level is just a little too high. Like, it's a little too hard for what the game should have been, um, which is, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not going to win just because of that. Uh, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, is an incredible game. I'm trying to fucking think what else came out this year. 
Evil Within 2. I loved it. I talked about it heavily on the channel. It's a great game. My winner, I think, though, I think my winner is going to be Prey. Prey, okay. Um, from what they were able to accomplish coming out of like the first game, where it was such a, a tumultuous journey to the game we actually got in 2017 from the first one that came out as a launch title for the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. That game is nothing like the one that we got, um, really, minus the fact that it's a sci-fi game. Um, but then we got like that crazy trailer at like E3 2011, which was like the bounty hunter running through the city. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm, yeah. It was, cra it was crazy. It was a crazy trailer. Everybody was so excited for it. And um, then we got the game we got, which I was not expecting very much of, but it ended up surprising me very, very heavily. I was so just like excited to play more of it. And it's always a really good sign for me, especially when I get to the end of the game. And I'm just like, I just get sad that it's over. Like I wanted yeah. the story to keep going and I wanted more of the game to continue to be able to play. Uh, and there just wasn't any more. And it made me sad. But that game was really, really, really good. I think that's my winner. Let me think for a second. Bernie, keep going. Uh, my winner <clears throat> just basically comes down to what I played, not basically what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Um so, I mean, the only games I've really played because I've been very disappointed in the sports series of every game. Mm -hmm. I think Fortnite is my winner. And the Fortnite is your winner. Yeah, and the reason why I picked Fortnite and not PUBG is because I've seen the issues with PUBG. Yeah. It's a very it's an alpha game like you said. It, they haven't they didn't figure this out because the guy that came or the guy that created the game said that this game was going to run at 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X. It's nowhere near that. It's like a broken piece of trash. On it's Xbox. broken. Yeah. I like, you basically people wasted their thirty bucks or however much they wasted it on, because it just doesn't make any sense to me that if Microsoft buys you, you have all the money from the pre-orders. Mm -hmm. You should have invested and worked on this game to make it run smoothly yeah. without any issues. But that's the reason why Fortnite is my winner. Uh, Battle Royal games are taking over for this year, or they took over this year. Yeah. And Fortnite was just a better experience because it kind of combines both PUBG with uh, f uh, Minecraft elements as well. So that's why that's my game of the year, only because I also play with my friends and we've had a great time and a fun experience with that game. Okay. I thought of a couple more games I want to mention that I didn't have a chance to. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that a lot of people are giving their game of the year award to. Mm-hmm. I think that's well overstating how good that game is. That's a good game. It's very well polished. Like there's no issues with it. All the graphics probably the best mm -hmm. visual game maybe I've ever seen, um, especially on a console. It's so crazy to look at. But the story is kind of meh. Not cra not crazy about that one. But I can see why it's going to be in in the running because it is really a great game. But there's a major game that I did forget that is up for contention for my my pick it's actually it almost is making me question whether i want to give prey my award mm -hmm. and that is resident evil 7 came out this year resident evil 7 yeah, biohazard that. did come out this year came out in march so it's kind of as a earlier on in the year still is kind of having like this tale of like people still like it's still pretty popular because it was such a unique game for what Resident Evil is especially but then like it came out nobody was expecting it to be good mm -hmm. and it was awesome that, that game is really 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 good I don't know if I can pick between the two of those <laughs> I'm not being very good about picking my winner yeah and then Outlast 2 came out this year yeah. too I love that game but I'm gonna uh, my winner what's he going with gotta pick one Jeez. And only one. I'm going to pick Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7. I'm going to pick it because I love the series. I've been a fan since probably the the second game. I don't think I was old enough when the first one came out, but I have played it since. It's a great game. But um, yeah, Resident Evil 7 is great. I actually haven't gotten a chance to play it, but it also came out with a VR, ver like a just complete game in VR for the PlayStation and the PC, I believe. Um and that, which is very unique, is on par with the actual game itself. Like, they did just as good of a job with the VR as the regular, which is, you know, commendable because a lot of these games aren't coming out with good VR versions. Uh, 
But yeah, Resident Evil 7, beginning to end, was just so unexpected. And I think that's the reason why it won my favorite movie of the year award, too. Is because I just, like, I had no idea that was coming. And I had no idea that it was going to be good. Mm -hmm. Just because of, like, how different it really is from the source material to what we ended up getting is... It was dope. It was dope. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just great series i will now i will not argue with resident evil 7 i totally spaced on that one being a uh game 2017 or 2017 game you know it's just kind of crazy to me that i kind of view as you know the august Mm -hmm. on as like 2017 and forget about the early part i I do that too video games especially because there's so many every year yeah you just kind of forget overall like we discussed before we started into the categories this really was kind of a weak year for video games um, I don't know. It, I just feel like everything is so spread out and like all the games are like... It felt like for a little bit we were getting to the point where if you had an Xbox or you had a PlayStation, you could basically play every good game. Mm-hmm. But this year has proved that completely wrong where like PUBG up until a month ago was not available anywhere except on the PC. And now even then it's really basically still only available on the PC. Then you have like Zelda and Mario, which are exclusively on the Nintendo. I don't remember what I was saying. Um, what, what what was I saying before the break? I think before uh, we went to break and before the camera shut off, I think we were just talking about. I remember. It, I was talking about splitting up, like how games feel like very spread out in 2017. Like mm-hmm. everything feels like it's like, you know, I need a different thing that I don't own to play that game. Oh, I need a different thing to play that game. And it's just like, it's kind of a bummer when half the good games are on consoles. Like, not everybody has everything. I would say the majority of people have one thing. Yeah. So, when you have a year where, like, there's not many good games to begin with. So, like, maybe two of the best games of the year come out on one thing. And then it's kind of the same for each of the different platforms. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a bummer because then you have a year where, like, the two of us are basically Xbox and I play PlayStation 2. But... Like, we're tied down to those consoles, so we can't play Nintendo Switch games. We can't play PC games, so it's just kind of, it's a bummer, and it makes the year feel longer because there isn't as many games coming out, not as many good things, and we're not getting, like, the, you know, the massive amount of AAA games that I felt like we were getting two years ago or even last year to yeah. some extent. I think it's the reason why they did that is because they realized how much it cost to make them and then they realized that if you can't deliver on the game, yeah. you're not making any money. So they're like playing it safe with some of the franchises. So you have like your Destiny 2's come out, mm-hmm. your Call of Duty's came out, and your, Sass- your Assassin's Creed. Yeah, It's just, it kind of sucks to me that we can't get a good AAA new IP. Yeah, it just doesn't exist right now. Because of the way that the landscape is is that like if it's a colossal fail you're losing a lot of money Mm -hmm. so i just wish that we would get to a point where these companies would maybe not spend as much money but take a risk Uh because i think we've we've gone to a point where we've already seen some of the things you know we're tired of like the same rehash regeneration re-remastered you know i mean at some point we're probably going to get halo 2 re-re-re-re-remastered probably and honestly, the, the sad part is, like, I've almost looked forward to some of those remaster games more this year than any of the new games. Like, I just don't care about Destiny 2. I don't care about Call of Duty World War 2. Like, I would rather go back and play, you know, some mm-hmm. old game, honestly. Yeah. And, you know, part of my video game, like, thing that I do when I look, like, I hit a point where I'm like, oh, I need to play something new. I'm to the point where I'm so, like, I, I guarantee you I know all the big games that are coming out, yeah. basically. They're either super far away or they're trash. Like, they just came out and they're trash. So, like, I look at, like, the backwards compatibility on Xbox One. Like, oh, what games can I play from the 360 on my Xbox, you know? Yeah. And I get more excited about those than I do the new, the new games. So, it's kind of a sad point in gaming right now. But, yeah. Very similar to what we said with WWE wrestling, what we said about music, maybe I think we said this about music too. I think 2018 is going to be a really good year for video games. There's a lot of of big games coming out. Yeah. Um, Good looking games that I feel like 
these companies have taken their time to make. And I think a big reason that we didn't get many games this year was some of the colossal failures that we saw maybe scared some companies off. Mm -hmm. Like Mass Effect is a big one. I think that probably scared off a lot of companies. Like, oh, we really need to take our time or we're going to lose a lot of money. And the same thing goes for Battlefront 2. Like, I guarantee you there was probably a couple other games going to come out that have the same exact microtransaction system, and they, they delayed them by months to get rid of that. Yeah. It's just the way video games go. Yeah, it's the way everything goes. Yeah, I just think we're also getting to a point where I want to see 2018, the moves on microtransactions. I want to see if companies are going to be a little bit weary of them in terms of, like, really laying low on it and not forcing it upon people to yeah. strong arm them to get money. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, keep going. No, I just get like the thing I just get frustrated with is that these companies prey on people's weaknesses. They prey on the fact that people are willing to pay for these or people are so desperate for a video game that they're going to just keep playing the only good ones that are out there like like to be honest, like Battlefront 2 was very exciting because there's nothing else to play. So when it came out, of course people are going to pay to play Star Wars and they're going to pay some extra money to keep playing the game and get better. You mm -hmm. know? Of course. People want to play NBA. They want to make it till the next year so they can play able to play that one. It's just the way it goes. Then, I just want to mention, like, this is 2018. Like, there's some good shit coming out in 2018. Far Cry 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Monster Hunter World is going to be fun, God of War, the new one, Dragon Ball Fighter Z coming mm -hmm. out in January. The new Spider-Man game, which looks incredible. You got Last of Us 2, Crackdown 3. I'm pretty excited for Crackdown yeah. 3. There's just a lot of good games. It looks like next year, honestly, all the games that should have come out this year are coming out in 2018. Yeah, hopefully the companies have realized that microtransactions aren't the way. I know I'm going to repeat myself, but I just want to be like known for these companies. Please don't... Get it, get it straight. Please, right. please don't put it in. It, it just doesn't need to happen. If the game is good enough, people will buy it. Give us single, single player. I want more single player. Not only single player, but just like a single player game that doesn't need to be connected to the internet. Like, like Assassin's Creed, I feel like you're getting half the experience if you're not playing on the internet, yeah. you know? And I just don't need that. Like, I don't want to play. I just want to pay. Maybe I just want to play a game every once in a while. Where I don't need to connect with fucking Billy Joe, you know, on the side and see what he's doing in the game. I don't care what they're doing. I just want to play my game and, you know, enjoy the story the way it was meant to be told. Not like, look at, oh, this guy's online. Do you want to play co-op with them? No. I would ask him if I wanted to play co-op, you know? Yeah. I don't care. Anyway, guys. Got off on a little bit of a negative foot there for video games. But really, that's kind of 2017 in a nutshell. Lots of negatives, lots of goods, though. Yeah, I mean, like we talk about in every topic, there's always a positive. I mean, there's always stuff that we look forward to. There's always things that we are excited about. And just like in everything, you know, it's life. Mm -hmm. There's stuff that we like, there's stuff that we dislike. But the thing that is great about New Year's and the New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, is that there's always a chance for next year where you're looking for that one shining moment. Yep. Fresh start. Fresh start. And I and honestly, this goes beyond just our categories of talking. And, you know, we've talked about this a few times. 2017 is just like, it, it has honestly been a rough year for a lot of people. I think it's just like, everybody needs to just realize, new year, new start. Everybody, let's be nice to each other and just try and find the positives rather than point out the negatives. Yeah. You know? Which I know we just did half of our list was negative <laughs> yeah. stuff. But sometimes that's important to point out the bad stuff because, like I said with the movies, like you can find a bad thing and still enjoy it for what it yeah. is. doesn't always mean it's awful. Like There's moments of Mass Effect, as much as I talk shit about it, there's moments of it that I actually enjoyed. But really, it wasn't good. It doesn't mean we can't talk about it. Yeah, and I think, like I mentioned before, in either wrestling or NBA talk, was the fact that there is moments where the negatives can be a learning moment where you can learn about the mistakes that happened mm -hmm. and get better next year. So that's just what I'm going to say about that. Is there anything else we need to talk about? I don't think so, man. Well, guys, this is probably going to be the last video of 2017. 
probably for the Fusion Corp family, the Fusion Corp Corporation channel, whatever you want to call us. That's probably our last last video of the year. We've only been doing this since August. I think midway through August we put yeah. up our first video. It's only been a few months. I know, you know, from my side of things, I love it. I'm happy that I'm doing it. It's something I look forward to doing in making much bigger in 2018. I think the same goes for my, my good friend Bernie. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned, guys. If you like what we talk about, you like our topics, you like how we talk, whatever the case, just let us know. Give us your perspective on the, the things we talked about and then give us your per perspective on what we should change and how we should make our, cha our channel better. Better. Like, battle. Battle. Make it battle. <laughs> Make it battle. Make but, it better in 2018. Yeah, like Peter said, just give us your suggestions and feedback. I mean, I want something a little more in-depth than just you suck. But if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. It can't, just can't change how you feel. But like I said, give us your uh, feedback. Let us know. We're, we're still on the road to 50 subscribers at this point. Hopefully, we'll get it by the end of the new year. But this has been your boy, Bernie. Peace. We'll see you guys in 2018. Peace. Peace.